Coordinators, we're going to go to the phones now. Welcome in Jason Caldwell. Jason, thanks so much for being part of the show tonight. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Man, we're doing great. Jason, uh, again, uh, you and I were able to talk uh, this past Friday about some of the high school games coming up, but we're going to lean more on the uh, the Auburn side of things, Auburn University, and uh, Luke and I were just talking about that. Uh, right now, you know, the, the, the negativity that has come out of Auburn the last few weeks uh, and this last weekend with, with Reese Dismukes. I know Auburn, the team, rallying around uh, the backup. Toon Day Farrakay, did I pronounce that right? Yes, uh, uh, yeah, Farrakay. Yeah, Farrakay. I mean, uh, big shoes to fill, a big game. What's the mood down in Auburn uh, around the team, Jason? It's good. I mean, I think these guys, it's, it's the next man up for them. And, you know, they you know they understand that hey, these guys uh, know they know the consequences now and they're going to have to, uh, you know, if they have to deal with that. And it's, uh, the next man up, you hear it time and time again. And uh, I think for them, they, uh, they're just ready to play a football game now. You know, you get to get through camp and, and practice and all the things that they've gone through, especially, you know, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator. I think they're kind of anxious just to, just to see what things are going to look like on the field in a game against another opponent. You know, Jason, uh, the depth chart for Auburn now out and uh, on offense, uh, you look down and let's start at the offensive line position. Uh, the offensive line really, uh, we're going to see some of this talent that we've been waiting to see for quite some time and obviously over with the left tackle, Greg Robinson. Uh, but looking over on right tackle, a true freshman, a guy that Auburn was able to get this year, part of that great recruiting class, and that's Avery Young. Uh, just just talk about the way this offensive line has come together because Chad Slade, John Sullen at the Guards and of course now uh, Reese Dismukes being replaced. Uh, uh, talk about how you feel that this offensive line is going to perform Saturday. Yeah, you know it's it's going to be. Uh, I think there'll be some highs and some lows when you play. You know, you know some young guys like that, and, and you know, you know it's kind of kind of expected. You know, when you only have one one upperclassman offensive lineman on the roster, uh, you know you're going to play some young guys, and that's that's the case this week. And uh, I mean, obviously you look at the tackles. Uh, you know, Greg Robinson, redshirt freshman, and then. Uh, Avery Young, true freshman, uh, two guys I think are going to be really, really good football players for Auburn before it's done, and they'll do some really good things Saturday night and probably make some mistakes as well. And that's you know that's what you get when you play young offensive linemen. But you know I think the good news is is that you know I think they they've they've been working together some, started developing a little bit of chemistry, and even even without Reese Dismukes, I think it's one of the best things they did. Instead of putting John Sullivan at center and, and really changing the entire complexion of the line. You replace and, and put you know a tune day in there. You kind of keep the, the the complexity of the line together a little bit. I think that's going to help them uh, work together a little bit better and uh, should uh, should help them out a little bit Saturday night. Jason uh, at running back. I know a lot of people that are Auburn fans are concerned about Auburn's uh, uh, you know the size of running backs back there. Ontario McCaleb getting the nod as the starter. Five eleven hundred and seventy three pound. We know what he can do. Uh, he's very electric. Kirk Herbstreit said one of the uh, top five most electric football players in college football. Uh, but a lot of people concerned with the size back there for Auburn. And as we know in this league, uh, to be successful, you've got to be able to run the football. And you look down through there, Trey Mason five nine. 198 pounds. Yes, he's put on some uh, some weight, but still uh, pretty small by rights of, of tailbacks. Corey Grant, 5'10", 203 is the biggest one. Mike Blakely, 5'8", 206. Uh, talk about the running back position. I know Javon Robinson was going to be leaned on heavily coming in as a true freshman. Do you think Auburn can get it done uh, mixing and mingling for tailbacks? Yeah, uh, you know, I think you look at, at those sizes in 5'9", 200, 5'8", 200. I think uh, majority of, in, in my memory, the, the the greatest running backs in history are a lot of those are those size guys: Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders. Uh, you know, you look, the list goes on and on. The guys that Thurman Thomas. I mean, there's been a bunch of good running backs that are about that same size. So, uh, you know, I think you look at them, and it's all going to matter of of you know staying healthy because uh, I think those guys are physical enough to run inside. Trey Mason's a guy that you know you look at at five nine, two hundred pounds that has sprinter speed. I mean, he's a guy that can really run. Uh, extremely strong and physical, so I think I think running back will be fine as long as they can stay healthy. And uh, you know, I think that's going to be the, the name of the game for them. John Terry is going to be a guy that's going to be used, I think, in a similar situation than he's been. He'll be a guy that they'll use some on the perimeter. I don't think they're going to line him up in the I formation and, and run him up the middle twenty times, but I think he's going to touch the ball in a variety of different ways. And then you know, Trey Mason and Mike Blakely, I think, will be the, the really the two that'll be called on to kind of be the the every down backs for this team and. I think as long as those guys can, can stay healthy, I think they'll be good. 
We got Jason Caldwell on the phone from uh, inside the Auburn Tigers and scout.com. Jason, let's talk about the defense uh, for Auburn. Uh, defensive end, obviously D Ford uh, at one of the defensive ends posts, and then of course Corey Lemonier at the other. Uh, and the defensive line, Jeffrey Whitaker, Angelo Blackstone uh, getting the nod at, at defensive tackle. Talk about that defensive front. A lot of high praise coming out of camp about Jeffrey Whitaker and how he separated himself from everybody else. Yeah, I think the, the the biggest thing you see there is I think you finally see some maturity at the, at the defensive line position. That's even with a true sophomore and Angelo Blackson at, at tackle. But I think you look and Corey Lemonier, uh, a lot of experience there. Jeffrey Whitaker with a lot of experience. But the other thing is, is depth. I mean, you look and, and when Nosa Igwe is a third team defensive end, that tells you that you got some depth there. I mean, he missed spring practice and it really put him behind in learning this defense. So Craig Sanders is there on that side as well. The other side, I mean, you got Ladarius Owens, who did some good things last year before he got a little banged up at the end of the year. You got the other defensive end position, then you got Gay Wright and, and a former starter, Kenneth Carter, uh, Devontae Sigler in the middle. I mean, you know, there's a, a pretty group, pretty good group of defensive linemen that they're going to rotate in and out some to try to keep them fresh. And I think that's the name of the game. But, but you're right, Jeff Whitaker to me has been one of the uh, one of the prime time performers for this team just because he he stepped up his level, uh, fitness level, really everything. Uh, from last year to this year, he's lost weight and in better shape, and it's translated to more production. I think that's what they're looking for. You know, out of the defensive line, they want those guys to be productive, to get upfield, to, to wreak some havoc, and uh, you know, that's something that, that Brian Van Gorder wants out of his defense. Going over the linebacker position before we let you go, uh, Jason, uh, uh, Darren Bates, Jonathan Evans, and, and, and Jake Holland. Uh, uh, again, 6'1", uh, 241 pounds, Jake Holland in the middle, but uh, uh, Darren Bates as a senior, Jonathan Evans as a senior, coming in at 215 and 231 pounds and 5'11". Uh, how, how do you feel about this linebacking core? I think they'll, they'll actually be pretty good. I think you look at, at the improvement that I think they made as a group under Brian Van Gorder and I think one of the, the things that stands out is, is kind of the demand that he's got for them in terms of communication, uh, being physical. Uh, they've had plenty of scrimmage situations to work on just doing just that. And I thought Darren Bates, by the end of the year last year, really improved his play at linebacker. I think he's gotten a lot better. And then, you know, Jay Collin, to me, is a guy that I think people are really going to be surprised with. I think people got a glimpse of him last year, but you know, Jay played most of the year with, with two bad ankles and, and a bad wrist. And, you know, when you can't run and it's hard to wrap up, that makes it tough to play middle linebacker. So I think a healthier Jay Collin, I think people will see a really big difference in his play. Jason, real quick, uh, Auburn Clemson, they know each other very well. They've been playing each other, it seems like, every year uh, the last two or three years. And uh, uh, starting to become a, a rival game between these two. Uh, Clemson finally gets the better of Auburn for the first time in a long time last year. Really, uh, Auburn came out and played a tremendous first half and just fell off. Sammy Coke, I mean, Sammy Watkins had a great second half and really put himself on the map last year. No Sammy Watkins for Clemson. Uh, how do you see this game playing out? Well, it's still a really big challenge for this Auburn defense when you look at Taj Boyd and uh, DeAndre Hopkins and Andre Ellington. I mean, it's a very talented Clemson uh, offense in terms of skill position. Some young guys up front on offense. Um, you know, lost some guys on defense as well. I think this is a game that will go down to the wire. I think Auburn's defensively uh, is going to be much improved, and, and I think that will be one of the big keys. I think that and the fact that, that this is an Auburn defense that should be pretty comfortable in facing this type of offense. Uh, you know, I think it, it, it's going to switch and transition to, to Auburn's offense. I think uh, protect the football, uh, establish a running game, and, and, and no stupid penalties. And I think Auburn's got a very good chance to, to come out with a win. Jason, I think everybody just ready to uh, put all the speculation to rest and ready to get things kicked off uh, this coming up Saturday over in the Georgia Dome. We really appreciate you taking time out. Being part of the program, look forward to having you on again soon. Sounds good, guys. Have a good night. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it so Bye. much.